My name is Andreas Korfman, and uh, I'm running for Board of Directors for Woodsworth. I, I know over the past few years, uh, in 2002, when they federated with the uh, Canadian Federation of Students, uh, and since then they've reshuffled the positioning a bit, but basically it uh, would be my job to deal with uh, the Woodsworth College Students Association and uh, the Students' Union and uh, act as a representative. There, were, there are three for Woodsworth and um, voting on issues, uh, proposing uh, plans to uh, better engage the college that I represent and the university in general. I used to be with the Students First platform. So basically, I think there's only like four of us left, but um, uh, personally I'm running on increased uh, clubs funding. Uh, trying to push to have the uh, executive and uh, certain spending done by the union uh, decreased. Uh, I looked into some things and things like dental, uh, health uh, coverage, uh, union fees. What I'm trying to push to do is instead of having an opt-out clause, because I know I've spoken to lots of people, Instead of uh, having that, because people don't really know about that either right now, um, what I'd push for is an opt-in clause. So if you really need the services, because I know a lot of people, uh, undergrads especially, some still live with parents. Uh, you've got OHIP, sometimes parents have a uh, coverage, but if they don't have that, and I understand there's lots of need for that, then they still have the option. It's just it would save the average student a lot more money, a couple hundred dollars. Uh, per student per year. So that's money that we can spend on other things. And I guess the last thing I want to push for is, uh, of course, uh, to uh, stop flat fees. But uh, more so than not um, is the increased clubs funding and making sure students have the resources that they're paying into and uh, to make sure um, the union runs on a more non-politicized platform. So basically, instead of using our tuition fees and putting it towards things like uh, the uh, Israeli Apartheid Week and uh, Angela Davis and Ward Churchill coming in and talking, um, it's very expensive. It's, it's, it's a sort of outside of, of uh, students' realm. Uh, it's the Students' Union's mandate to work for students and student issues. And I really think spending money on these political initiatives could be shifted down from the students' union level and instead redirected to individuals and organizations on campus, the clubs, which is the heart of every commuter school, and uh, shifting it down and giving them the money to do with it as they please. Uh, there's nothing wrong with in engaging politically in what you believe in. It's just if you're the union, and you're using students' tuition, I just don't think it's right to go around um, spending money on protests and things like that that aren't very effective and or a lot of people are kind of upset about, so, yeah. Students first, um, it all started at the all candidates meeting. Um, I, I was there, obviously, and what happened was I was only informed about the they weren't disqualifications per se. Um, what happened was some of the uh, board of directors and one uh, VP candidate were deemed not to be eligible to run. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what happened as to, as to you know, what caused it, but I mean, people were talking about the signatures and the students num student numbers. I know personally I had to get 25 of them uh, nomination signatures, I got 50 because I knew uh, some of the people um, that I spoke with were part-time students and uh, part-time students, unfortunately, um, they don't really count towards a nomination signature. So there might have been a discrepancy there, but they told us, well, I found out about it and so did uh, my fellow candidates. Um, they told us literally right when we got to the meeting um, and they said, Basically, you can't come in to the meeting, the all candidates meeting, because you are not deemed eligible to be a candidate. 
However, the CRO um, and the uh, UTSU election guidelines and rules do state that if there is some kind of discrepancy in a ruling or um, a decision made that says, oh, okay, well, either you're not eligible or um, some kind of uh, issue revolving around you know, the merit points uh, and the participation of that potential candidate in the election um, has an opportunity to appeal. And it was a bit of a catch-22 situation, though, because the rules also state that if you do not attend the all-candidates meeting um, and you don't have enough signatures, you're not eligible to run. So even if they got an appeal and it was all settled in terms of um, the amount of uh, nomination signatures, they still could not run because they didn't attend that meeting that they weren't allowed to go to. Even the varsity was uh, shut out of the meeting. And uh, I guess the big, big, big concern was we were really the only opposition slate this year. Um, so now the, most of the executive, with one exception, is running uncontested. And uh, as it stands, I, I feel it's not very democratic. Students First doesn't feel it's very democratic. Um, and it's just, it, it, it gives you that feeling that, uh, you know, things are sort of set up in the way that it, it, it's, it's meant for the incumbents to win. For example, uh, like I said, they, the Students' Union at U of T federated with the, Can, or sorry, the Canadian Federation of Students in 2002. Um, since then, the incumbent rate of re-elections and successes since then uh, have been 100%. So basically no opponent has ever won since they were federated. Um, there's a bit of speculation going around that says that the CRO is good friends with a couple of people who are past and or current members of the UTSU executive. Um, it just really seems fishy. And I, and I know Brett Chang and uh, Matthew Gray and uh, Brent Schmidt made statements. Uh, Brent Schmidt specifically said that because they had all their campaign material already made, he spent, uh, spent $2,500 on it all. And because it had the name of the one uh, VP candidate who was disqualified, Rohail, um, they were not allowed to use that material. And if it was essentially, you know, a waste of $2,500. He's on OSAP, so he is in a bit of a, in a, bit, of, bit of a pickle now, financially speaking. Um, so they all decided to band together and uh, boycott the election because it, it is not very democratic. Um, it's not very open. And uh, it seems very one-sided. I was talking about the CRO um, and the elections committee. Uh, how they're very, they've got close ties with uh, the union and uh, the Federation of Students. Um, when it, the, the CRO's rulings, sorry, this is what I was going to add, um, even in the package and when we were at the all candidates meeting, he said that um, there aren't set guidelines as to how many demerit points go per situation. Um, so pretty well, I mean, uh, there's categories that say if you commit this offense that goes against the rules, you'll get around this much. But it also says it's completely up to the discretion of the elections committee and the CRO, the chief returning officer. Um, and, and his rulings, actually, if you go on the UTSU website currently, they are all fairly against, uh, in terms of demerit points, the opposition slate, which is boycotted anyway. Um, so their decision was based on the fact that it's very undemocratic, and I, I completely agree with that. And it's tough to win, and uh, I don't know, well, they weren't treated fair. Um, my decision, though, however, to continue running uh, was more of a decision of principle. Yes, I support the whole idea of getting the word out there that they're not democratic and that they have a fairly radical agenda that's 
politically biased. Um, that aside, though, um, it's, it's, it's the spirit of running in these elections. Instead of running around condemning people, uh, most of them, uh, there, there, were, there was only one executive candidate that was, well, uh, not disqualified, but uh, in effect uh, not eligible to run. Uh, they, everybody else still could have. And I think that I would rather continue than to give up and that if things would be set up in a non-democratic way, like certain people are suggesting, that uh, it would only be worse to let them win uncontested. I'd rather go out with a fight than, you know, not give up. But let's face it, it's probably better to run and potentially win than to just pull out and uh, make a lot of noise. Because in the end, in the long run, it doesn't really matter. My name is Andreas Korfman. I stand for uh, clubs funding, uh, increased transparency of the union. If there's any budgetary documents that is discussed in a meeting, uh, that that be posted up A, the agenda in advance, and B, uh, on the internet where people can access it 24-7 without having to stand in line in the office. Uh, basically work on a more electronic d democratic system uh, similar to that of the governing council uh, elections, actually. You can go on Rosie, you could do it fairly quickly. Um, like I said, uh, political neutrality, uh, channeling the, the, the uh, whole idea of political activism down to the level of the students, funding their initiatives, because it's a university and it's all about the students. So vote for Andreas Korfman. Uh, we can do better.